Hi everyone, welcome back to His Arrows Are Hands. If we haven't met before, my name is Celeste and I'm the homeschooling mom of three boys. This year, my husband and I are in our fifth year of homeschooling our boys who are currently in ninth grade, seventh grade, and fifth grade. So in this video, I wanted to share with you another one of the curriculum that we are using with our oldest son, our ninth grader. There are many universities that require an earth science course within the high school years. So if you are looking for an earth science option for high school, I pray this video can be helpful to you. I'll be showing you a look inside the General Science One, which is a survey of Earth and Sky by Masterbooks. This course is designed for 7th to 12th grade and it will give your child one credit of science. This course has a focus on the areas of Earth science pertaining to oceanography, astronomy, meteorology, and mineralogy. Also is a General Science Two course available by Masterbooks, which is focused on a survey of geology and archaeology. So I'll insert a picture in case you'd like to take a look components of that course but this course is a really nice overview and kind of touches on these different areas of general science. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you a look inside all of these books so you can see kind of the Kava course is laid out and what a typical week looks like for your student using this course. We are currently in the third book within this course so we've gone through quite a bit of the course. I wanted to use it for a while before showing you a look able to give you a better sense if the course has been working for us so far and I can say that it has it has been a great course and it really has worked well for our family looking forward to show you a look inside this course So this course is made up of four textbooks. I have the ocean book, the astronomy, the weather, and the mineral, and also a teacher guide. In addition, we also decided to use a ring binder as well. So what I'm going to do is show you a look inside kind of the layout of the textbooks, and then I'll show you a look inside the teacher guide to see kind of how it all ties together. And then lastly, we'll take a look at the um, student binder as well first book that your student will work through is the weather book. So each one of the four books has a different author. Um, they are beautiful books and they really are laid out in the same way, but I'm going to use the weather book kind of as an example first to show you how the layout is. Taking a look at the table of contents of their weather book, the topics explored are God created, what causes Earth's weather, water in the atmosphere, thunderstorms, dangerous thunderstorms, hurricanes, winter storms, wild weather, climate in the past, climate change, and God creation in you. And the way that it's laid out in each one of the books is that there are three levels that you can explore with your child. This really makes this course a great option as a group subject because you're able to have multiple grade levels. Again, this course is designed for seventh to 12th graders. You can have several students within that age range or those grade levels and be able to use the same course and just by deciding how to go through and use these levels. So level one is intended for kind of the basic level. They say it's presented for younger readers. Level two is a middle level to dive a little deeper into issues related to the weather and climate. And then level three is the upper level, which incorporates incorporates more advanced concepts and theories as well. So you can decide with your child kind of what level you'd like to go through. I will say that we are doing this with our ninth grader and he is going through this um, at level three, just to be able to get the most out of the course as it's counting for high school credit. I'm gonna show you um, a look inside this book. The books really are so beautiful and bright. So this is the first lesson. Again, here is that level one section. So it shows here level one is the white portion, level two is yellow, level three is gray. So you're able to easily identify the sections that go with each level. So if you're working this, for example, like we are at level three, your child will need the white section, the yellow section, and also the gray section. So that's an example of that. There also are words to know in each one of the lessons, and I'll show how this is incorporated within the worksheets as well. So I'm going to do just a quick flip through through this weather book so you can get a sense of kind of how it looks and how it's laid out. For the second quarter, your student would be going through the astronomy book. And so I'll show you a look inside that book. This is the table of contents. I love how they laid that out. I think that's really clever. You have the introduction to what is astronomy. You have the night sky, the moon, the solar system, two kinds of planets, the sun, telescopes, history of astronomy, stars, extrasolar planets, star clusters and nebulae, 
our galaxy, the Milky Way, light travel time problem, the expanding universe, quasars and active galaxies, cosmology, and then the conclusion and the glossary. And again, it's laid out in the same way where there is level one, level two, and level three sections within the book so your student can work through. One nice thing about how this is laid out is that it really, you're really able to have your student go through it independently. It is nice for a group subject, but again, how we're using it is more as an independent course, which um, our son is going through um, pretty independently. So I'll just flip through this book and give you a look inside. The third book in the course that your child would go through in third quarter is the mineral book. And this is actually the book that we are currently in right now with our son. Um, and again, I'll show you a look inside that book. Table of contents for that. Chapter one, where do we find minerals? Chapter two, what is a mineral? Three, how to identify a mineral? Discovering minerals in the Bible. A world of valuable minerals. Minerals in creation science. Minerals in the Lordship of Jesus. Building a Mineral Collection, Mineral Identification Guide, and then some biblical references for minerals and metals. Um, lastly, there is some additional resources, such as a periodic table of elements, subject index, Bible passages, etc. So I'll show you a look inside this book. Again, same thing. Level 1, Level 2, Level 3 is color-coded so that your child is able to work at their level. The course finalizes in the fourth quarter with the new ocean book. So um, this is the final book that your child will go through at the end of the course. I love how creative they are with their table of contents and the design. It's really fun. Chapter one is an introduction to the oceans. Then they continue in chapter two with research and the deep oceans, physical characteristics of the ocean, composition of oceans, waters, tides, waves, and currents. Weather is chapter six. Chapter seven is harvesting the ocean. Chapter eight continues with marine life, exploring the coral reef, ocean vessels and exploration. And chapter 11 concludes the course with the Genesis flood. So again, the same level one, level two, three system carried on through the course into this final book as well. In addition to the four textbooks, you will also have this teacher guide. This teacher guide really is what ties everything together for the course. So I wanted to take a little time to show you a look inside kind of how that is laid out and what you can find inside this teacher guide. So one thing, there is a note um, regarding making copies within your home. Um, it is allowed for additional students, which is very nice because if you'd like to use this course more than once within your home, um, you're able to, because the rest of the course is textbooks and you can make copies of this, you're able to use it in the future, which is what we plan to do once our um, current seventh grader goes into high school. He can also have the opportunity to go through this course. There is um, a section here on how to use the teacher guide. It gives you an idea of how long the lessons will take um, and also some other components that you're able to find within this course. There's a section on course objectives and also a note regarding high school students. As I mentioned, this course is designed for seventh to 12th graders. So if you're doing this with a high schooler, you really want the course to enough substance to really count for that high school credit. So they have a note as far as their recommendations on how much of the work regarding the additional activities and such your high schooler should do to be able to receive that high school credit. One of the really nice things, and I, I really like about this, is that they have a sample suggested schedule. So if you homeschool on a 36-week schedule, um, 180 days, kind of that traditional school schedule, this is already done for you. So they have this laid out for 36 weeks. So what I'm going to do is just walk you through kind of the first week of school to give you an idea of what a typical week looks like, how it's laid out, 
within this course. So what I did is I've made up two copies of this schedule. One I placed in my teacher binder so that I'm able to schedule and track his assignments. And the second one I placed inside his student work binder. So then he's able to go in and check off as he completes his assignments and I'm able to go in and add his grades afterwards. So this really allows him to work independently through the course. And again, I'll show you a more detailed look into his binder. Looking at this first week. So day one, for example, they are starting the course with a new weather book and day one says read pages four to seven. So I'm going to grab that real quick. Okay. So I grabbed the weather book. So when you open the book again, pages four to seven is the first lesson. So the, for day one, they would go in and read pages four to seven, so six and seven. And again, depending on what level your child is working, that will determine how much of that they read, but that is day one. Day two, then what your child will do is work on a worksheet. There are worksheets that go along with this course and all of those worksheets can be found in this teacher guide. And it tells you there, worksheet one, page 17 in the teacher guide. So if I go to page 17, I'm able to find that worksheet. So again, that's day two's work. It covers pages four to seven from the textbook. And then here is worksheet one. So I mentioned that in the beginning of this first lesson that there were always words to know included in each lesson. So this is where they will take the time to really define each one of these words to know. And again, it's a note saying that you're able to find the answers for this in the glossary in the back of the teacher guide. So I'll show you that glossary as well. So they would have put those definitions in and then answers these questions. And sometimes the worksheets are just one-sided. Sometimes they're two-sided, um, and that's kind of how that would work. So that would be day two. So going back to our schedule, day three, your child would read pages 8 to 11 in their textbook. Day four, they would read pages 12 to 19 in the textbook. And then day five, they're working on an additional worksheet. So this is worksheet one, pages 19 and 20 in the teacher guide. So if you go there to page 19 and 20, you find that worksheet there. Chapter two, worksheet one, again, the words to know, and then the short answer, um, short answer questions. One additional thing I wanted to mention regarding the worksheets is that there are additional activities at the end of the worksheet. So these are some of the sections that, again, if you're doing this course with a high schooler, you may want them to do many of these additional activities. If you're working this with a middle schooler, you may choose to skip some of these additional activities. Again, you can go through that and determine that um, for your child. That wraps up the first week. And again, your child can just check it off. And if you can then add in the grades, if you add have grades for your homeschool, and place that there. So, and it continues that way the entirety of the course. Within each book, there are several quizzes. So you see here that it says, for example, on day 37, you have the weather book chapter seven to nine quiz three. And that's on page 157 and 158 in your teacher guide. So after all of your worksheets, that section kind of in your teacher guide, the next section you will find are your quizzes and tests. So here you have all of the quizzes and tests your child will need for this course. So again, they're here, you can, you know, they're perforated, so you can just, you know, pull those out if you'd like, or if you prefer, if you wanna use this you know, course again, or if you'd like or prefer to make copies, you're able to do that as well. So at the end of each book, so for example, in the end of quarter one, your child finishes the weather book there is a book test. So this is gonna cover pretty much the entirety or an overview of their, their meteorology or their weather studies. And so after your section on quizzes and tests within your teacher guide is also the answer keys for you. So these are answer keys for your worksheets as well as answer keys for your tests. So all of that is there for you as well. The final component in your teacher guide, as I had mentioned, are the glossaries. And so um, there are glossaries for each one of the books here. And your child can use this glossary to be able to fill in their worksheets and kind of define the different terms that they will be studying. The final component that we are using with this book is a three ring binder. Again, as I mentioned in the very front, what we have placed is just a schedule for the course. And then what I have done is separated each one of the four books protector with just a page kind of color coding the books. So for the weather book, um, I color coded it blue. So we have that there with all of the worksheets. So here's where he completed all of his worksheets 
for the weather. Um, after all of the weather for quarter two, we have astronomy. I coded that purple. Go with the purple book there. And again, he has his um, worksheets for that. The third section was the mineral book section. So I did that yellow kind of to go with that. Um, and again, he also is um, completing those as well. So for the mineral book, I just wanted to make a quick note is that I added one extra section for that with this additional divider because one of the things that they'll be doing in the mineral book is that they will be creating a mineral notebook um, that they'll be working on as they're going through the mineral book they get introduced to different minerals and as they introduce to those minerals they are completing this so again this is like for example amethyst they're completing all this information and he will continue to um, complete that as he goes through the rest of the course for that the final um, section is the ocean book and i made that aqua and blue color for the ocean and again i'll be adding in his worksheets in this section when he gets to that portion of the course the last um, section in his notebook is where i have his glossaries so as i mentioned inside the teacher guide at the back of it you have your glossary so you can decide if you just want to give your child a teacher book he can use um and i'll just show you that really quick again this section in the glossaries here you can just have him use your book if you prefer or you can copy it as i have done and i've also copied it um, on color paper to also to correlate kind of with the color coding i did for the four different um, books Okay, so that is a look inside the General Science 1 course, Survey of Earth and Sky by Masterbooks. If you have an earth science curriculum that has worked really well for your family, please feel free to share it in the comments below. I hope that you and your family are well. I pray you are blessed. I pray you are having a wonderful homeschool week. May the Lord bless you and sustain you and bless the work of your hands. Thank you for watching this video and I look forward to talking to you soon.